Hello and welcome to the Anxious Knitter Podcast. My name is Joy and I am the Anxious Knitter. I'm so anxious that every time my dog walks up our stairs in our building a little bit too slowly, my first reaction is, he's broken his back! And then I spend the next four hours closely watching him to make sure that he hasn't, in fact, broken his back. But he is, like, the center of my entire universe, so... You guys don't blame me for that, right? (laughs) Anyway, you are here for episode 31. Like I said, my name is Joy, and I'm coming to you from Waterloo, Ontario, Canada, where I live with my husband, Luke, and our dog, Obi. This is a podcast mostly about knitting, but also occasionally about crochet, spinning, embroidery, and whatever other fibery, crafty thing catches my fancy at the moment. Um, If you are new to this little corner of the internet, welcome. Um, This is probably not going to be my finest work because it's been quite a while, but I'm very glad that you're here. And if you are a returning viewer, um, thank you so much for coming back, especially after my hiatus. Um, It means a lot to me if you stuck around. So um, yeah, welcome. A lot of stuff is... I've totally forgotten how to do this. Uh, I actually had to stop and watch an old video to figure out what my um, intro was supposed to sound like. So that's interesting. Um, Actually, before I get into where I've been, let me just quickly apologize if the sound is not amazing. I am recording on my phone today since uh, my computer just, I don't even want to try today. (laughs) I just, after this long, I just want to try it on my phone and see what happens and um, that being said uh, if it's a little bit choppy is because I'm going to have to record in segments and probably like upload segments to my computer and then come back so bear with me um, but yeah so I have been gone for a very long time I did not mean for it to go that long but I have not been very well lately um, I'm just finally not sick I lost my voice for basically the entire month of June. Um, And by basically, I mean the entire month of June. I had almost no voice. I, and on top of that, I was also in a mini musical (laughs) called Itsy Bitsy Spider and the Fly. And I had to sing and it was very hard when you have almost no voice. And it was outside in 40 degrees Celsius heat wave weather. So, and I was basically wearing a black plastic costume. So that wasn't great. And then uh, as soon as my uh, voice came back, I got this really horrible sinus thing. It wasn't an infection. Um, I don't know what it was, but I had uh, intense sinus headaches for about two months. And um, the medication I was on for it, which just made it worse and So then I stopped taking that and it literally two days ago just properly cleared up. So cross your fingers for me guys that I am out of the woods uh, in regards to my health because I'm tired of it, okay? I'm tired of being sick. Um, But yeah, and on top of that, Luke and I have been busy um, and uh, Yeah, we are preparing for the KW Knitters Fair on September 8th at the Kitchener Auditorium. We are vending as Cabinet of Curios. Um, We are booth M and um, yeah, in the micro market. So we will have lots of yarn and bags and tons of stitch markers. And I have some of those things to show you today. Just a quick glimpse. Um, Also, just so you know, in regards to today, I am not going to show you all the projects I've been working on, um, just because I don't want this to go on forever. I don't know how long this is going to take with the segments and all that stuff, so um, I just kind of picked a few things and um, I'm going to go from there. Um, I will be announcing the giveaway winner, finally, uh, in the next two segments from now. Um, But uh, yeah, I guess I'll just kind of talk as things come back to me. I can't even remember the last thing I that happened. So um, anyway, let's get right into my very first segment, which is my dweeb story of the week. Okay, so this is a quick one. I think it's pretty dweeby. So we've been having this issue with um, these like bugs. I think they're elder box bugs or something like that. 
and they are just, they were like flooding our apartment. Like you could not go a couple hours without finding at least one or two of them. And they're freaking me out, okay? I hate bugs. I hate them so much. So the one morning, Luke went to the bathroom and then he comes out of the bathroom and he was like, oh my gosh, I just had to kill like two bugs in there this morning. I don't know how they're even getting into the bathroom, but anyway. So I was all creeped out knowing that the bugs had been in the bathroom and then the whole rest of the morning I was on edge like constantly thinking I was seeing bugs out of the corner of my eye. So I went to go take a shower and I leaned in to like turn on the, the faucet and I felt something land in my hair and I freaked out. I went, what? And I smashed my head into the tile wall of our shower. Um, and you want to know what guys there was no bug it was my shower curtain gently caressing my hair and so I had this like bruise right here on my temple and like I was like paranoid that I had a concussion all day so there's my dweeb story of the week of the last three months really but uh yeah um okay so Let's, let's talk um, giveaway, shall we, in my next segment called Hear Ye, Hear Ye, which is of course, announcements. Um, I just had my phone with all of my show notes. Oh, oh right, uh, I'm filming with it, my phone. Okay, so that's not going to work. Um, Okay, I think I can remember it. So the winner, this is for my 1500 plus subscribers. I think I'm at about 2000 subscribers now. I haven't checked actually in a while. Um, the, the winner for this uh, is going to be um, getting a skein of my yarn. It's a skein of his most prized jewel beetle. And um, also a, oh there's a cute little squirrel eating out there. Um, and also they'll be getting a pumpkin stitch marker made by me and after many many months of waiting you guys the winner of the subscriber giveaway is post number 41 who I believe is Nick Knits 5 with Sheila Marie of course I will put it up on the screen so you all know for sure and um, so congratulations Sheila Marie I will contact you personally so that you don't have to, because I don't even know you'll be watching this at this point. So I will contact you, um, but congratulations. I will get that out to you as soon as I know, um, get your details. So yeah, uh, finally, it's done. Um, but yeah, so other than that, uh, just Knitter's Fair, I guess is the only other really exciting thing. Um, well, I guess I can just mention Rhinebeck really quick which is that obviously Luke and I are going to Rhinebeck. Um, if you see us there, come up and say hi because um, I will be having a little bit of something something that I can give you, um, limited quantities obviously. But yeah, if you see me at any point on the weekend, um, just come up and uh, say hi and I'll be happy to give you something. Um, we will not be at India Untangled. We were going to go to India Untangled, but in the end we kind of decided against it. We wanted to have um, the freedom of time on Friday because we're driving down and um, and also like I'm I'm really more interested in getting those sort of like local type wools like like uh, Green Mountain Spinnery esque type wools um, I've been really into more woolly wools lately as opposed to um, even my own hand dyed yarn <laughs> honestly just for knitting I've just been really feeling that the like wooliness but um, that's kind of what I'm going to Rhinebeck for in terms of purchases. So we opted out of Indian Tangled. Um, but yeah, so definitely if you're going to be at Rhinebeck, come and say hello to me and come and say hello to Luke. So let's get into the knitting content, shall we? With my first segment, which is finished objects. And I've got a few of them. Um, one of which, I'm sure you've noticed, I'm wearing right now. This is the Birkin Sweater by Caitlin Hunter. I just finished this yesterday. 
this was a super fast knit for me. I think I knit this whole sweater in about two and a half weeks. Um, and I love it. This is, out of all the pullovers I've knit so far, this one's my favorite. Um, I do, I always get this little like thing here. I wonder if I'll be able to block that out somehow. But either way, even with that, I love it so much. The fit is exactly what I wanted. I knit the size medium. Um, and I knit this in Holstgarn Super Soft, which I'm obsessed with. Guys, I love it so much, this yarn. It's incredible. Like, it opens up so many doors for me because I can't always afford to go buy, like, you know, something that's the price of Brooklyn Tweed, which is what this pattern is written for. But I feel like I'm achieving kind of a similar vibe. So let me just um, see if I can show you a little bit better. So you can see I have nice ease, very nice drape with this yarn. Um, I opted to knit full length sleeves as opposed to elbow length sleeves, which was kind of an accident, but I'm actually really happy that I did that. Um, I realized once I got to the um, 11 and a half inches it was supposed to be, it was already down to like here on me, and I was like, that's just gonna be awkward if once I put the cuff on, so I just went all the way. Um, yeah, so this whole sweater, all things told, I think cost me about $25 American, which is pretty good, guys. Um, the main body color, which is this sort of soft whitish gray, um, is nougat. The green is um, moorland, I believe. Uh, the red is jasper. The yellow is maize. The blue is navy heather. And uh, this is my first time doing three strands uh, per row, which I did love. Unfortunately, I think it was um, Junko Okamoto maybe posted on Instagram a video of how she like catches her floats. And it was so simple. And of course, by the time that video showed up, I was like down here. So it wasn't even helpful for me, but I'll know now for, for next time. Um, yes, yeah, so when I blocked this, I, I soaked it for half an hour in like kind of lukewarm water with um, dish detergent to get the, um, the spinning oils out. And then I just soaked it again for another 20 minutes in, um, in soak wash because I like the smell and I just thought it would smell nicer. Um, it it's crazy how this yarn blooms. It feels so nice. I mean, it is obviously a little woolly, but I am perfectly comfortable having this directly on my skin. So if you're not super super sensitive to wool, um, this is a great one. Um, my color work, I feel like it blocked out really really nice. Um, I don't really have any puckering. Uh, my yoke, I definitely my row gauge was off because by the time I finished here. It said in the pattern to knit until the yoke was nine inches. Um, I was already at 10 inches, but I'm happy about that because I don't like having sweaters like right up against my armpits. I just don't, sorry guys. Um, it's just uncomfortable for me. And um, yeah, and I love bunching up my sweaters. So at the elbows, so it worked out really well. I love it so much. I'm gonna wear this so much, I know it. Um, and I do want to actually knit this again in a two colors because I've seen a lot of people do um, where they do like a darker color for the body and then just like white or or like a light gray or something for the color work and I really like that look so I'm thinking I might I might do that sometime um, and I feel like this hardly used any yarn at all um, I think the body I only used like of the main color only four out of six skeins that I had um, if they're 50 gram skeins and then like barely used any of these so I'll have plenty for other projects and other color work in the future um, I basically I almost got both sleeves out of one 50 gram skein it was pretty sweet and they were full length sleeves so yeah I'm very very happy with my Birkin sweater I just really wish that I could get that bump out of there but anyway uh, my next finished object let's take a break from Caitlin Hunter because I have more Caitlin Hunter is another color work project <laughs> Three color work projects actually that are my finished objects. These are the Underwing Mitts by Erica Husser. Of I feel like this pattern needs no introduction. Um, yes, so I also knit these out of Holscarm, but in their wool silk blend. Um, the dark color is Raven, and the white one is 
Oh dear. Oh, I have it right here. Pearl. So it's got sort of like a nice, I don't know if you can see, sort of a tweedy texture because of the silk. Um, I love knitting these. These were super fast knit. I used some of my own hand dyed yarn for the duplicate stitching. Um, it's the same yarn I used for my Mount Pleasant tee. Um, yeah, and I love them so much. Um, I thought that this was going to, they were going to be a starker contrast. So they do kind of have a, a cool vintage look though because they do look a little bit more faded. I only made a couple mistakes, little ones like right here. I don't even know that how that happened, but I just kind of let it go. I wasn't gonna tink back all of that color work. Um, but this is one of those things I just know I'm gonna wear all the time once it starts cooling off. Um, I, I will say that if I had knit these in sock yarn, I almost guarantee that they would have a little bit more of like a slouchy fit. Like I, I oh be chill. I do feel like the gauge is a little tight with the whole scarn, but they do fit. I do have small hands though, so just keep that in mind. But um, yeah, so I'm really excited. This was a pattern that I, when it came out, I, I wanted to knit it immediately. I was so excited about it. Um, it's deceptively simple. Honestly, I'm not just saying that. Um, if you've ever done any color work before, you can do this. Um, it, it's amazing because like it looks so complex, but it really really it really isn't it's um, It's good. It was a good pattern. I'm going to knit these again I bought enough to knit my best friends some for Christmas. They know that they're getting that so it's not a spoiler um, Yeah, and my next Finished object um, Actually, you know what I'm going to stop this recording and then start a new one be right back Okay, so this next one I know you guys have seen in progress, which is my uh, Sunset Highway by Caitlin Hunter. Again, Boyland Knitworks. Um, I knit this all out of my own hand-dyed yarn. Um, I used, oh, I still have to trim all my like ends because I, I don't trim them all the way down until after I block. I have to do it on this sweater too. Anyway, so this is an unnamed color. It was an over I did of a mistake skein. Uh, it's like a dark kind of tealy green. Uh, again, this is the orange from my Mount Pleasant tee, so that I'm getting a lot of use out of that, that skein of yarn. And then the um, the bottom scallops are the very first skein of Remington number no. one, which is one of I guess my signature colorways. Um, yeah, and then the main body is sparrows and ink caps. And I knit everything out of my 80-20 base, except for the orange, which is my um, uh, BFL silk base, Barbarium. Um, I finished this sweater and was so, and I put it on, and I was so eh about it. And I think mostly it was because I had a real struggle with my sleeves. So I had intended to do the um, color work sleeves, um, that are in the pattern, uh, but I could not for the life of me get that color work to look good um, I tried it on magic loop. I tried it on a, on a, a 16 inch circular, which is obviously too big. I tried it um, On DPNs nothing I did worked. I tried um, That technique where you twist every single stitch and then untwist your yarn after 10 or 15 stitches looked terrible. I was miserable. I spent hours and hours and hours on one sleeve. I've never had a problem with Sleeve Island. This, I knit each sleeve in a basically a day. Okay, it was like no problem. This is about the same amount of knitting, but uh, yeah, it was a huge issue. And then I had to dye a whole new skein of sparrows and ink caps, and as you can clearly see, it is not the same. The problem, I think, with uh, hand-dyed yarn and sweaters is just that when your circumference changes between a body and a sleeve, like I really don't know that there's any way that you can avoid that kind of pooling. And like, I just, I, if, I had just, if I had decided to go back and rip it out and try again, do something else, I never would have finished the sweater, which would have been sad. So I finished it, I blocked it, was kind of met about it. Um, and then, I let it sit for a little while and then I tried it on again and I actually do really like it. It doesn't have as much ease as this one does, um, but it is still really nice and um, I'm really happy that I knit it. 
I love the colors I chose. I really don't think that you can notice too much the pooling once it's on and you know, you're moving around and that sort of thing, but um, like it's just weird. Like I feel like I'm kind of wary about the whole knitting with hand dyed yarn for sweaters now. And I'm also interested to see how it wears. So anyway, I am still pretty happy with it. It is a beautiful pattern and it's well written. And, um, and I'm glad to have this uh, in my sweater collection. Um, oh, that was the other thing actually with the Birkin I just wanted to mention, which was that um, when I got to the bottom ribbing, the pattern told me to do knit purl two, it's like, it's, it's two by two ribbing, but it told you on like the wrong side to do knit two, purl two, and on the right side to do purl two, knit two, but if I had done that, it would have turned into like a seed stitch, but I had the right number of stitches, I'm pretty sure. So I was really, really confused. Um, so I, what I ended up doing was I, I cast on, well, I cast on, I made, I increased two stitches um, in the ribbing so that I ended with and started with a knit two. So they were even on both sides. But I was very confused because I just needed to knit two, purl two all the way across both sides given how many stitches I had. It was weird, I don't know. I just kind of was like, it doesn't matter, it's ribbing, nobody's gonna notice that, whatever. But yeah, um, all right, and my last finished object is my Impressionist MCAL shawl, which is a pattern um, by Helen Stewart, of course. And here she is, she's huge. Um, okay, let me tell you some things about this. First of all, I got spoiled. I won't tell you how. Actually, no, no, I can't tell you. It's not a big deal. Um, I kind of got spoiled twice, but the first time was not too bad. The second time, I fell behind. I didn't think I was that far behind, but uh, Helen Stewart posted a picture of the finished product on Instagram before I finished. I was having a really, really bad day. I had just come from like a really bad morning at preschool. <laughs> I was like eating lunch with my mom and I saw it and I burst into tears because I, I really wanted to finish it before they released the pictures but I didn't make it. Anyway, um, I loved the colors that I picked. Uh, so the color you see here is um, Cricut Kitchen Yarns in the Cleopatra and the Asp colorway. The purp more purpley color is Fuse Fiber Studio in Map of the World and um, the dark green is the Loving Path yarn in the Mystic colorway. Mystical? Mystic. Mystic. Um, it's been a while, guys. <laughs> I loved every single one of these yarns. Um, Debbie, I'm, I'm sad you don't carry this base anymore because it feels, it's soft enough to be a single ply. It's crazy. Um, however, I don't love the shawl itself, which kind of bums me out because I love the colors and the yarn so much. It's pretty, but like these ends are so long. Like, look how long they are. It's just so much, it's so much. And like, I love, I love a big shawl, but I think also I'm kind of done with crest shaped shawls right now. Um, I'm really into big triangle shawls. So, I mean, I'm gonna wear it, obviously. It's beautiful. Um, the Pico bind off made me wanna like jump off my balcony maybe, but um, yeah, it is beautiful. And I loved, like all these yarns are really special for reasons like the, you know, the Loving Path yarn and the Fuse Fiber Studios yarns were gifts and the Cleopatra and Ass was from the Kitchener uh, KW Knitters Fair last year. It was a yarn dyer I'd been looking at for a really long time. So yeah, uh, was not in love with double-sided lace, if, all, if I'm being completely honest. Um, it was exhausting, especially with that many stitches. But I did it, I finished it and uh, yeah. So those are all my finished objects. Um, I mean, I finished a pair of socks for my brother. I think, I don't know if you saw those. Um, but yeah, those are all the, the big things that I finished. 
Okay, so let's move on to my next segment, which is of course, works in progress. Um, I just have two to show you. I have other, I definitely have more works in progress than these two, but just for the sake of, you know, time, I'm just gonna show you two. Um, the first one is a shawl. It is in my own hand on yarn. It's in one of my new colorways, uh, which is called, uh, so I should mention, I'm doing a collection right now of um, artist inspired and sort of artist and painting inspired um, colorways. So this one is my, uh, is called Gentileschi's Allegory of Painting. Uh, Gentileschi was a really interesting woman. She was a Renaissance painter. Um, you may recognize one of her most famous works, which is her painting of Judith and Holofernes, which is particularly brutal. Um, I think you can tell that it comes from a woman who um, has suffered at the hands of men. And, um, you know, when you see other paintings of Judith and Holofernes, um, Judith is always very demure. She always seems very uh, powerless in a moment where, if you don't know the story of Judith and Holofernes, she cuts off his head um, in the middle of the night. I didn't opt to go with that painting. I chose her self-portrait. I just felt like it was, um, I don't know, it just was suitable. I liked the title. I loved the colors in it, which are these um, kind of golds and oranges and and um, kind of greeny blues. Um, yeah, you, I mean, you can see as the shawl gets bigger. Oh, I didn't tell you what it is. This is the Sunwalker by Melanie Berg. This pattern was actually gifted to me by a viewer a very long time ago, and I'm so excited to finally be knitting it. Um, and of course, you know, when you, like I said, you the pooling is different as, as you know, the length of the, the rows gets longer. But I kind of like it. It's, it's kind of like a, almost creating a fade effect. And actually the last skein I'll be using, it's a three skein shawl. Um, it's a little brighter, didn't get as much blue. And I think it's going to be kind of cool. So um, I'll kind of get this accidental fade going. Um, but yeah, so I'm still on skein one. This is a three skein shawl. And already look how big it is. I love it. Um, it'll be a nice big triangle when it's done. It has a double moss stitch body and then it has a big lace panel. Um, and uh, yeah, I love this. I'm knitting it with my Antiquity Singles Base, 100% Merino. And yeah, here's my next skein cake that I'll be adding in very soon. This thing is almost done. I've almost finished the first skein. So yeah, uh, I've been eyeing this shawl for a very, very long time. I had been dreaming about the color I wanted to knit it in, and this is basically exactly it. So I'm very, very excited. Um, and I want, my goal was to get it done for the knitter's fair so that I could have it on or, or like on the table or something and people could see it, but I don't know if it's going to get done just with the, you know, craziness of life and whatever. But yeah, and that's, and I'm, keeping that in here. Here's, I don't know if this is really a tip. I don't know if it even makes sense, but I never put all the yarn for any of my projects in my project bag. I only put the skein that I'm working on, like I do it with sweaters. So I can usually fit a sweater project like this one in a two skein bag. Um, and then I just, when I need a new skein, I just get a new skein and put it in the bag. I don't know, is that weird? I don't know if that makes sense. Anyway, and the only other um, whip I have to show you today is another sweater project. Oh, I also did, guys, I'm so out of it. This is my Rhinebeck sweater, um, which I will talk kind of, yeah, it, I decided to do this as my Rhinebeck instead of the thing I'm gonna show you, which is this, which is my Susu sweater by Nora Gone, which I'm knitting in Whole Scar and Coast, which is the, the wool cotton blend. Um, there's just like little bits of scrap yarn everywhere. And it's in this sort of like um, brownie purple color, which I really like. It's a seamed sweater, cropped, um, with this beautiful twisted stitch cable going up the front. It's just, oh, it's so pretty. I love the texture of the, um, this is the back panel. 
But um, I love the texture of double moss stitch. I'm really enjoying having two projects with double moss stitch going. So this was going to be my Rhinebeck sweater. Um, but in the end, because I thought, okay, here's my thought, was that here's a sweater that's a cotton blend, it's cropped, it'll be great if it's quite warm at Rhinebeck, because um, I can have a layer underneath it really easily, because I would probably have something kind of longer underneath. Um, and I was really excited about that, but as time starts ticking away, I was like, there's just no way this is going to get done, and I do not want to go to Rhinebeck, maybe my only Rhinebeck, I don't know, and not have a Rhinebeck sweater. So I cast this on, I, I put this kind of away for a little bit, and I cast this on instead, um, and knit this really quick, so now I for sure have a Rhinebeck sweater, um, and uh, if I get this one done as well, it will be a bonus, but um, I don't know. I also... I'm going to be frogging Luke's Drange sweater because I basically, I finished the body and was halfway done asleep and when I realized that it looked terrible and looked like the worst kind of hand-knit sweater. And um, I told Luke, <laughs> I guess I'll just segue into this because it doesn't really fit anywhere. But um, I told Luke that if he wasn't going to wear it, to tell me, be honest with me, I'm not gonna be upset because I don't wanna finish the sweater and this, you'll never wear it. I'd rather, um, I'd rather frog it and try a different sweater that you would actually wear. So we agreed, we're gonna frog the sweater. Um, I think the colors were too stark in contrast for that particular pattern. I don't think they, I think it really needs that sort of tweedy, really rustic look, um, the Drange sweater by Stephen West. Um, so what I'm going to do with that, uh, what I'm gonna do instead is I'm gonna knit him a flax sweater. But what I'm going to do is we went and bought uh, some Patton's classic worsted in a like a darker like navy gray, navy gray, navy blue. And I'm going to color block. So it'll be gray probably to about here and then the bottom will be this navy blue, and I think it's gonna look cooler. There was a picture of Eddie Redmayne that I found where he was wearing a similar sweater, except it was gray and orange. So I'm kind of going for that look. Um, so hopefully that sweater turns out better. Um, but at Rhinebeck, we are going to be looking for a sweater's quantity of really nice yarn for, for a sweater for Luke. So yeah, that's, I was like so bummed about it, but at the same time I was like, I've bought Luke really nice sweaters, like beautiful store-bought sweaters that he doesn't wear and I, I'm like the fact that I've poured 20 hours into this already I can't do it so yeah anyway um, I'm also working on a still water I did put some work in on my um, sizzle pop but honestly guys I'm like struggling even to think about that shawl um, I've got some socks on the go and um, but yeah I'll talk about those maybe next time um, yeah, so that is it for my works in progress. Um, I do have some acquisitions, but I'm not gonna get into them today. They're not really that exciting. You saw, I mean, this was part of it, the yarn that I bought for this. Um, and uh, I'll just, I'll talk about that yarn. It's all Holst yarn. So I'll talk about that yarn once I've cast on projects with them. But my idea was that I was gonna try the Super Soft, the Coast, and also uh, the Coast, the Tides, which is the silk the silk blend, and also Noble, which is the cashmere blend. I have a Lucky Charm shawl that I'm hoping to cast on fairly-ish soon. I have to clear up some clear up some needles, but um, yeah, uh, Lucky Charm shawl by Melody Hoffman. It's gonna be pretty, I think. Um, yeah, so that's it for my projects. Okay, so really quick, I'm just gonna give you some news from the cabinet. Greek. So I just wanted to show you um, kind of some of the project products that we're gonna have at the Knitters Fair. Um, what doesn't sell at the fair will be um, put into the shop, obviously. Um, but I am so excited about the fabrics that we've picked. This is not all of them. We still have two other fabrics that um, that are really beautiful. Uh, but these are just the ones that we have done so far. 
So we'll have two sizes, a sock and a shawl, as usual, but we've now introduced drawstring bags. Drawstring bags are my favorite thing right now. Um, so yeah, so we have lots of drawstring bags, but we'll also have some zipper bags if that's uh, your preference. But yeah, so this first one is one of our Halloween bags. It's really cool because it's kind of subtly Halloween. You could use this all year round, um, but like there's little like skulls and stuff. It, it kind of was like Haunted Mansion-y. We thought like Disney's Haunted Mansion, but we have this beautiful floral wreath pattern inside. And then, um, yeah, so this is the sock size. A nice thick rope. I thought it gave it kind of a rustic kind of touch. Um, but yeah, so we have that which is one of our Halloween bags. We have a second Halloween bag, which is again, we went subtle for Halloween. Uh, well, we have some from uh, other, some other Halloween bags, but uh, like using this fabric, which is obviously more Halloween, but these two are very subtle, I think. So this one has really adorable little ghosts. And on the inside, it's got this uh, moon and stars fabric. Oh my gosh, isn't it so cute? Oh, I love it. Um, Luke is making me a bag in each of these because I just had to have one. Um, we also have this really, really cute um, bumblebee bag, which is, these ones are a zipper with um, these like leaves, dark leaves on these. I love this. I'm hoping, we're hoping to do some notions pouches for Knitter's Fair and I think we, we have enough fabric to do some little notions pouches here. Um, we also have this Penny Arcade fabric, which is really nice, which has uh, this light gray on the inside. And then, because uh, you know we like, we like our bug prints here, we also have this really, really cool vintage looking um, moths and butterflies print. And it has, I love this, like look at this combination. I love it so much. And if you roll it, like if you were to roll it down, you'd be able to see it. Oh my God, it's so pretty. But yeah, so we have that as well. We also will have an Alice in Wonderland um, fabric. It's beautiful, it has gold foil on it um, and a hot air balloon fabric. Um, I'm going to have lots of stitch markers. So I'm gonna have three different types of mushrooms, pumpkins, um, lots of little eggs in bottles. The bottles are different this time around, but they're really, really cute. Um, some squid tentacles, hopefully some jack-o'-lanterns, maybe some acorns, maybe some eggs. So yeah, so there'll be lots of stitch markers. And then I also thought I'd show you, oh, so yarn. So I thought I'd show you uh, our new colorways, um, but I also wanted to say that we're introducing two new bases. So we're, we are introducing a, um, I'll show you, I, I did our, just a bunch of Hocus Pocus colorway for Halloween. We are introducing a DK, which is called um, the archi my archival DK base. It's 100% superwash merino, but it's extra fine, 17 micron count. It is so soft, guys. Like so soft like if you wanted to knit like um you know a baby garment or just a soft the softest squishy shawl this is it like even when i took it out of the the bag like when it was bare and still spinning oil in it it was so soft and silky um so definitely come in uh give this a squish and um and i also have a uh, a worsted base which i'm calling conservation dk um which is 100% superwash merino, and um, it's actually organic merino. So you can rest assured that the that the sheet that this came from there was there was no mulesing or anything. So it's uh, definitely a little bit more sturdy. It's a it's not it's going it's not going to be like the 17 micron. It's still very soft. Um, I think this would be great for like winter hats and mitts and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, so. That's our two new bases. Now let me show you some new colors. So let me show you on two different bases. This is one of my favorites. This is, um, oh my gosh, it's Vijay Le You know what, okay, some of them, because it's been a while, I don't remember their actual names, but I know the artists that they're based on, so. It's all good, it's on the tag. This is based on um, a painting uh, by Vijay Lebrun who was um, one of Marie Antoinette's court painters. Um, and I love, love, love her work. So these are, this is like a soft bluey gray and white with purple and blue um, and gray in there. I love this so much, oh my gosh. 
Um, so yeah, so there's that colorway. Then um, this is on two different, oh, that was on DK and on singles. Then here I'll show you on um, uh, 8020 sock and conservation worsted, uh, exhibition sock. This is um, a Singer Sergeant's Madame X, which is a dark, dark antique gold with black and brown speckles. Obviously you can see how they take the dye differently. But uh, a really, really nice autumnal color. I love this color. This was my second choice for my Sunwalker shawl, just so you know. Um, I have, I've only dyed two skeins of this on singles. Um, this is Hammershoy's, uh, it's based on Hammershoy's paintings, really all of his paintings, because um, they all have these dark grayish brown and black kind of um, interiors and women wearing these dark, dark colors. So that's a cool, like a really neat neutral. It actually would go really, I don't have it here obviously, um, it would go really well with uh, Remington number no. one in a fade. Um, oh, I only brought one of them. Okay, that's okay. So I have this on at least two bases, if not three. This is a Gain Gainsborough's uh, Miss something, Mrs. something. I don't remember. <laughs> Am I the worst shop owner or what? But it's based on uh, a Gainsborough painting. So it's got a soft pink base. I realized I didn't, I don't dye a ton of pink. And I, so I wanted to, to do pink, but I wanted to do it sort of my style of pink, where it's a little bit um, grungy, I guess. So it's got some green, it's got some, um, some gray, some brown. I love it. Um, I want to do a fade, a DK fade, but with these two and, um, my grandmother's coin collection colorway. This is another new colorway. I have this on two bases, but I only brought one. This is Klimt's Kiss. So it's that lovely gold with teal and red and purple speckles. And I don't know if you can, there you go, you can kind of get a sense of it there. Um, this one is the Gentileschi's Allegory of Painting colorway on sock. So you can see this definitely came out more blue. Ba different bases take different dyes. I also, when I dyed my own on singles, I tried a different technique. Um, which I think made it a little less blue as well. But I think it's really, really gorgeous on the sock. I think you get a lot of those really rich autumnal colors. And this is my Monet colorway, because you can't have a, you can't have an artist collection without doing Monet. But I didn't do his water lilies. It's it's something else. I'll put you know what? I'll put the names on the screen. <laughs> But yeah, so I went um, sort of with like teal and gold and a pinky purple color. Um, there's some speckling in there, some gold speckling, some turquoise speckling in there. Um, yeah, so that one's really pretty too. And of course I'll have lots of other colorways as well. I have a few of my Disney colorways. Um, I, have some Harry, I have some Harry Potter yarn, um, The my dear, you have the Grimm. And yeah. So that is basically what I wanted to show you for uh, the shop. So all that will be at the KW Knitters Fair if you're going to be there. Um, we are booth M. I think I already mentioned that. But uh, I think we're pretty close to the entrance. So we're a corner booth. So definitely come and take a look. Um, we'd love to see you there. Um, otherwise, I hope that there will be at least a few things that I can put up for you guys in the shop. Um, but of course, if you're, if you're not gonna be there and you desperately want something, do let me know. Um, I can try and get something in for you, like uh, you know, a custom order. It'll take a little bit longer, but uh, I'm always happy to do that. I'm drinking water out of my purple <laughs> skull glass thing um, because it's never too early for Halloween. All right. Um, so let's just do a really, really quick thing uh, of mm, this terrible segue, whatever, my life, etc. Okay, so uh, the last couple of things, um, 
so you, if you follow me on Instagram, you know I got my first tattoo, which is really awkward to show. There you go. It's a vintage key with little flowers around it. One of my best friends and I decided to get matching tattoos. So uh, hers has, instead of flowers, it's geometric. Um, we went to this place called Ink and Water in Toronto and our tattoo artist is named Andrew. He was really good. It was a really great experience. I was really nervous, but it was not very painful at all. I mean, part of that had to do with, with like where I got it, but um, yeah, it barely hurt and I barely bled, like at all. It was crazy. Like even he was like, you're not bleeding. And then when he had the like, the Saniderm stuff over it, I was expecting, you know, for it to be really oozing. No, there's like a little tiny, sorry if that's gross and TMI. There's like a few little tiny dots, but like there was like no blood. And like the scabbing wasn't even that bad. It was like ideal tattoo conditions. Um, but yeah, so that was so much fun. I'm already like wanting my next one. I have so many ideas for things that I would love to get. Um, but yeah, if you've been like wanting to get a tattoo, but like you've been too nervous or like you don't like you've been on the fence about it, just do it. Just make sure it's something you like and that you go to an artist that you trust and who like does really good work. Like that was really important to us. Obviously, if we're going to put something permanently on our bodies, like we want to make sure that it's like the best of the best. <laughs> and um, and it was such an ordeal to get there. It was really actually serendipitous because um, we just like we wanted to get them done sooner rather than later and the person we'd wanted originally like we didn't get into her books so we were on her waiting list but her waiting list is like three years long and so um this guy in toronto was booking so i i emailed him and then when he called for the consult in the middle of the call he's like okay so um i just you know i'm like i'm booking for august which was a little bit later than what we wanted to do um and then he's like, oh, hold on a second, the shop is calling me. And then like 10 minutes later, he calls me back and he's like, okay, so someone just canceled for this Saturday, which was two days from like when I was on the phone. And he's like, does that work? And I was like, yes, it does. So it was awesome. We got in like two days after our consult. Um, yeah, so that was a lot of fun. Um, other than that, like, yeah, Luke and I went to the zoo, and that was really cool. There were so many baby animals. There was a baby gorilla, a baby rhino. Um, we saw these little, like, tree frogs, I think, carrying their, like, young on their back, which was cool. Um, it, that might also be not true. I don't know, but it, it could have been carrying its mate on its back, for all I know. Um, yeah, it was really cool. There were so many cool animals. Uh, it's the Toronto Zoo, if you don't know. Some of the exhibits are a little bit sad and I feel like desperately need an update, but you know, some of it was really nice. Um, it's, you know, it's never gonna compare to Animal Kingdom at Disney World, but yeah. Um, uh, we're going with my parents to Black Creek Pioneer Village on Saturday, which I'm really excited about. I love Black Creek Pioneer Village. It's one of my favorite places in Toronto. Um, if you've not been, you should go if you are into that sort of thing. My mom and I were super into pioneers and and all that stuff, like Little House on the Prairie and, and whatnot um, when I was a kid. And um, yeah, I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn this off and then I'm gonna remember something that I wanted to tell you. Oh, this is about Opie. That was another reason I think that like, I just couldn't do it. So Opie had a back injury and um, he like, it's, pinched a disc in his spine and we live at the top of a four floor four four floor walk up why was that so hard for me to say and um we had to carry him up and down the stairs in the heat wave oh made it all the way almost to the end there before my phone decided it was like nope too much um but yeah so anyway opie is uh back in business although he's having some allergies right now um but yeah are you, are you feeling better but yeah so things have been good um i think i'm going to leave it there though um i'm sure there's other things i could talk about uh but 
I don't want to keep you all forever. So, um, if you would like to find me elsewhere on the internet, you can find me on Instagram as Rhineland Story, and you can find our uh, yarn bag and stitch marker shop, Cabinet of Curios, um, on Instagram as Cabinet of Dot Curios, and on Etsy um, at uh, Cabinet of Curios Yarns Dot Etsy Dot Com. And you can find me on Ravelry as Dabblejoy. And we do have a Ravelry group. You can um, find the link to that down below, but there's not really a whole lot going on right uh, right now. Uh, if you do ever have any questions that you'd like to ask me about uh, crafting or life in general, of course, um, there is the Get Nosy thread there. And um, yeah, I think that's about it, guys. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you um, enjoyed my comeback. Um, <laughs> Joy, why? Why are you like this? Um, and uh, yeah, I hope the sound isn't too terrible. But um, yeah, uh, I hope you spend some time working on projects that make you happy and uh, spending time with people that you love. And um, yeah, happy knitting, happy living, over and out.